Hello everyone, uh, back again with a, another video and again this time using the vector software Adobe Illustrator. And this was done for Cat Timber 2020 in the month of September. There is a daily prompt for painting, drawing various different cats. Today's prompt was Siamese. So I'm using the pencil tool right now to kind of block in shapes of color. Uh, you saw just a second ago I used the pencil tool to create shapes with gradients within them to kind of create a sense of lighting and um, depth, depth within the form of the cat. And then once I've kind of created just the base shapes, um, I go ahead and create do a Gaussian blur to blend them all together. And over the top of that, I will create more uh, vector shapes to kind of blend it all together and give it more of a painterly look. Right now I'm using the blob brush tool with a gradient set to it. Again, that's a uh, just a quick and easy way to kind of give it a more painterly effect. And I'm kind of just going over those areas that I just created with the pencil tool and then blur. Again, to just define them a little bit more, lowering the opacity of that group and going in and creating these specific shapes of the eyes. For this, for this one, I wanted kind of a uh, very intense blue eye. That's something that Siamese cats, at least, in my world are known for. Again, a Gaussian blur. Again, just to try and make everything blend together at the start. This is kind of what I would consider like the underpainting portion. I do the same thing with the ears. Add just a touch of pink in there. And the style that I kind of like to do is a little bit more illustrative. So it's not gonna be exactly true to life. You'll see off to the side, I'm using a picture of a Siamese cat as a, uh, a reference but I'm also including colors that you don't see in that exact picture to kind of add a little bit more uh, variety and kind of going over each and every shape I, kind of, I do draw very raggedy shapes and I let them overlap each other again to help everything kind of blend together a little bit better I believe for this particular piece I use the pencil tool a lot so you'll see that, I think probably the most in this particular one. Kind of creating the illusion of the fur with those super sharp edges, super sharp like points and jags. Now I'm adjusting the opacity of all the different shapes and I just keep going. Now I wanna add in some of the lighter areas, create a little bit of a gradient with a transparent edge that kind of blend out a little bit and these particular pieces the, all of the ones that I did for cat timber I gave myself a rule an extra rule to follow which was they needed to be done within an hour so this one is going to be more sketchy very rough uh, done pretty quickly this whole piece took me I believe about an hour and ten minutes so I did go over a little bit but the process repeats again with jagged edges, letting them overlap each other. I don't worry too much about going on the outside of the cat's shape because at the end I will do a clipping mask for the whole thing to kind of bring it all together. Right now I just focus on getting the colors and shapes the way that I want them. And you'll see that the more I layer on, the more it kind of all blends itself together. I had to go to the reference photo to get the exact shape of the pupil that I wanted a very cat-like uh, snake eyes sort of shape. Now I'm going over the eyes again. I want them to be I want them to be defined because the eyes for pretty much all of my pieces are always like the center of the focus. So I want to make sure that I get those I like nice and big. I want them defined. I want them to stand out a little bit. I want to spend a tiny bit more time. If I'm going to spend time doing detail anywhere, it's going to be within the eyes. So that's what I'm doing now. So now I have the general shape kind of outlined and I'm going to spend a little bit more time defining the volume of the eyes with shadows. I set most of my shadows to either multiply or darken and most of the highlights either to screen or overlay. Sometimes I'll also do something like color dodge just to add an interesting effect where you wouldn't expect it. Right now I'm kind of doing the shadows around the eyes. 
and then I want to do like the the jaggedy colors that you see within the the center of the eye to give it more of a, of a pop especially the center I want it to almost look like it's glowing again I want to define the nose a little tiny bit it doesn't it's not necessarily just a black you know spot on the nose or on the face so I want to make sure that I get that defined a little bit better and now I want to give more definition to just the face in general again the the face is where I'm going to spend the most time building up volume and d uh, detail again I don't worry too much when I'm making these shapes if they're like overlapping other shapes that I've made because I can always erase or um, set the blending mold to something so that the shape below it will show through You'll see me kind of cycle through different opacities and blending modes a lot because you never know, even if you do this a thousand times, you never really know exactly what you're going to like or what you're going to go for until you do it. So now I'm actually creating the, the actual shape that I want for the cat. So all these blobby lines and like messiness that's outside of the shape of the cat is going to be cut away and it's going to conform to the shape that I'm making right now. So. Again, I kind of like the illustrative, like, not perfect look. So even the line that I make right now is not going to be perfect. Okay, I grouped everything together. Below the line that I just made, I created a clipping mask. And that is the shape of the cat. Now, at the very tail end of what I'm doing, I want to just add some highlights. And again, I'm using the blob brush tool with um, a a color set to the center and then the edges are transparent and I believe with the the layer blending mode I used uh, overlay. Now I'm adding a little bit of shine to the eye in a curve so that it kind of looks like the eyes are round. Adding the the highlights to the eyes again to give them a little bit more life because right now they're kind of they kind of look dead. So now it looks like it's more of like a living creature. Add a little bit of highlights here and there to kind of make different areas pop just a little bit. And I want to add a little bit of uh, shine to the nose. Again, make it look like it's more of a 3D object. And just little tiny shines like this and a little extra detail to the shadows definitely makes it so that the eye and the nose and all of these things look like they have a shape and a definition and they're not just spots on the face. And then I realized that the way that the cat is sitting, it probably needs a, to have a little bit of that back leg showing, so I have to add that in. Something that I didn't really think about during the entire process until now, but it's still a good thing that I caught it. Okay, and now for the whiskers, which for me is one of the, the most fun pieces to draw. Just random wily hairs all over the place. And with that, I am done.